Okay, this is a video about the orientation and mobility inventory. If the numbers are a little blurry, just give them a few seconds, generally about 10 or 15 seconds, and they tend to clear up on YouTube for some reason. Um, the uh, nature of this video is to show um, the inventory, the who, what, when, where, why, how, um, with the you know primary focus being on the how, you know how we use the inventory, how we get the scores we do, and then what they mean and and you know what you can do for them. Uh, with those scores uh, is covered mainly in the next uh, segment. It's called in uh, inventory integration, which shows you how to write uh, an IEP goal in two minutes or less. Um, you know, very measurable uh, IEP goal in two minutes or less. Um, shows you how to do PLEPs in two minutes or less. Progress reports two minutes or less. Um, you know how to write a comprehensive and highly detailed evaluation in about 20 minutes. Um, so. Um, that's the second piece. This is the first piece, just kind of showing how to use the inventory. Um, going through the who, what, when, where, why. The who is me. I'm Ron Later. I developed the inventory back in 2010. Um, spent uh, some time in uh, the fall of 2009 working on the, uh, the street crossings uh, domain of the inventory. And once I had kicked that around for a while over spring break, I sat down and did all the rest. Basically, what I did was I took out my hill and ponder, and I used them for uh, to rely on uh, as a basis, I should say, for the domains of concepts, movement, single room, indoor O&M, cell protection, guided travel, cane skills, sidewalk travel, street crossings, orientation skills, GPS, public transportation, atypical O&M, rural travel, uh, vision-specific O&M skills, and community. Um, had to make some changes to what Hill and Ponder had and then set them aside and went through and looked at, okay, under concepts, what is it I teach under concepts? And there are areas like vocabulary, laterality, parallel, perpendicular, time and distance, which are then broken down into skills that actually get rated, um, identifying body parts relevant to O&M, uh, point or hold an object up point and hold object down, so on and so forth. So you have domains, which are kind of the big uh, segments of O&M, like concepts. The uh, areas, which are the, uh, the first level of, of a breakdown uh, of that big segment into more manageable chunks. And then you have the skills, which are you know, the things that make up the areas. So, um, all the information in the inventory, which to navigate the inventory, all you do is just uh, click on these little guys right here, down here at the bottom. Um, they bring you to different pages. You enter data, and all of that data shows up here on the front page for you. Um, but anyway, though, back to the who, what, when, where, why. Uh, you know, the, I've been an orientation mobility specialist since uh, 1998. Um, I've been in the uh, field of visual impairment since 1994. So I'd been doing this for a fair amount of time. I'd spent time as a uh, resident, I'm sorry, an itinerant teacher of the visually impaired. And uh, my last year as an itinerant, I was a TVI and O&M. And the, for the past uh, 16 years, I've been here at the New Mexico School for the Blind working on a residential campus. Um, the, uh, the win, again, was 2010, um, and uh, where was at my house. I just kind of sat around over spring break pecking this thing out. Um, I have a love of nerdy formulas and whatnot, and that feeds right into the inventory. Um, the, uh, the why, um, there, basically I came up with 10 whys, and, and what happened was I, was I was using TAPS, basically the industry standard, and there were some things about TAPS I wasn't happy with. And so I started looking around, and I didn't see anything that did everything I wanted. Um, and one of the things about the inventory is the breadth and depth of material that's covered. Um, you know, we go through the 15 domains, um, but you go to something like uh, street crossings, for example, within that domain, you know, you have areas. And then each area is subdivided, things like analyzing intersections. But um, where it gets a little more detailed, plus intersections, for example, um, identifying the type of control at the plus intersection. And then you have even subskills of always stops, parallel street, perpendicular street stops, um, traffic signal, identifying parallel traffic in the near lane. Plus intersection with an all-way stop. Plus intersection with parallel street stop. Plus intersection with perpendicular street stop. Um, uh, plus intersection with traffic signal. So it goes through all of these variables, and then you know there's T intersections and Y intersections and so forth. Um, it goes through all these variables and allows you to make sure that you've worked on all of these with your kids uh, or your adults if if you're uh, working with adult consumers instead of uh, students in uh, public schools. Um, it's one thing to know that you've taught a kid T intersection. It's another thing to know that you've taught a, a kid an all-way stop, 
Um, you know, whether he's crossing the top of the T, whether he's crossing the base of the T, whether there's a uh, traffic signal, um, you know, instead of a, a stop sign, whether the perpendicular street is going, you know, w w all the little variables are there. So it's not just, you know, kid can cross at T, Y, or um, uh, offset intersection, you know, check. No, um, th this is a lot more detailed. So you can get into each one of these and make sure you've taught each one of these because remember, liability-wise, you're responsible later when that kid, if he has a problem, he can come back and say, well, you never taught me how to do that. Well, you can show in the inventory, not only did you teach him how to do that, you can see when you taught the kid how to do that based on the scores that you have. So um, that was a big part of the why. Um, another big part of the why was something that we, we kind of touched on a minute ago um, with the um, uh, intersections, uh, the T and the plus, and I'm sorry, the, the T and the Y and the uh, offset intersection being just a check mark, um, you know, or a plus, uh, you know. Instead of having that, we have a rating system. And the rating system in the inventory is very simple. Um, zero, a student doesn't have a skill. Um, and is not capable of demonstrating the skill or doesn't need the skill. For example, if we have a student who's totally blind, you go to the vision specific domain, there's nothing in here the kid's going to be able to do. They're not going to scan their environments or use handheld magnifiers or, you know, be a visual traveler. They don't have any vision. So those are zeros, which doesn't count against him. So that's an important thing to keep in mind. Um, now, the, on the other end of the spectrum, let's say you have a kid who is uh, an albino, um, and he has a, a fair amount of vision, and maybe you're going to work on um, constant contact or two-point touch, you know, because maybe there are some times where with contrast, if the sidewalk and the curb and the street are all about the same color, maybe the kid kind of, maybe that blurs out and the kid can't really see that there's a drop-off there. So maybe you work on those skills, but you wouldn't work on touch and drag with that kid, not because the kid couldn't learn it, but simply because the kid doesn't need it. You know, he's got enough acuity to be able to look over and say, oh yeah, there's my sidewalk over there off on my left and make his turn. He's not going to have to do touch and drag. He's not going to have to do diagonal trail. He's not going to have to do a three-point touch. He's going to use his vision to take care of that. And so those would be zeros just because the kid doesn't need it. And so um, moving on to the, uh, the next score is a one. Basically, the kid can demonstrate a skill uh, sometime in the future after he's taught, but right now he doesn't know it. You know, you take a kid, um, who's never been to a shopping mall or any other place and, and seen an escalator. And, you know, you know the kid's never seen an escalator because you ask him, well, you know, what do you know about escalators? And the kid looks at you and says, what's an escalator? Okay, um, those are going to be ones until you get a chance to work on the skill. A two is the student can demonstrate the skill only with uh, uh, verbal or physical prompts. So, you know, essentially you've got a kid who um, you're having to walk through the skill. In this case, since we're on this page, three-point touch. Um, this is a student here that I've worked with where every time I work with her on three-point touch, I have to walk her through it again. She's just not remembering it, as opposed to touch and drag, for example, um, where the student is scoring fours and fives um, and is therefore reasonably competent. Um, this is a student who um, is not competent down here. And I'm going to pause this for just one. So, sorry about that. Had a quick phone call I had to take. Um, the uh, the twos again are the student demonstrates a skill only with verbal prompting, and again, this student is not doing this without me basically talking her through it every time. A three would be a skill that the student is demonstrating at least some of the time without uh, physical or verbal prompting. Um, and here on the cane skills, yeah, this kid's pretty much either, oh, well, we've got one skill up here on three, which is demonstrating the centered above waist handshake grip. You know, she does great with holding it down near her hip like pretty much all of our kids do, and she does pretty well. Um, you know, she needs the occasional uh, reminder as far as uh, pencil grip, how to use it. Um, but, you know, the, uh, uh, the centered above the waist handshake grip, she's needing more prompts. Not all the time, sometimes she can do it, but, you know, she's still needing prompts on a, a fairly regular basis, whereas here with the pencil grip, she's doing it most of the time without needing a prompt. And then as far as, you know, holding the, the cane but down there by her hip, she's doing that all the time. Um, you know, same thing down here, um, you know, keeping the cane in front of her body at all times is part of diagonal trail. Um, so the four, again, is, is a skill that, uh, you know, prompts are not often needed. And then the five is the kid owns the skill. So we have that rating instead of a pass-fail. It's not just a 
uh, plus or minus. Um, the uh, one thing about the uh, the inventory that other uh, tools don't do is you can show regression. For example, say this kid right here, um, she's been doing pretty well with uh, constant contact for uh, for identifying when it's appropriate, five keeping it in front, uh, five keeping it on the ground, five keeping the the arc uh, wide enough. Only a two though with um, you know staying in step. So I'm having to stay on her to keep her to keep it in step. So let's say after the summer. The, you know, or some other break in time or what have you, you come back and, and for whatever reason the kid's not doing too well with constant contact anymore. You're having to do a lot of prompting all the way across the board. And you know, obviously the in, the instep didn't magically get better. It's probably still about the same where you're having to keep on it. So in this next rating period, um, I do things quarterly, but you know, uh, depending on your needs, you may do it once a year, once every three years. Um, if you're seeing adult consumers, maybe if you only have 10 lessons and you're just working on cane skills, maybe you do one of these per lesson. You know, it, it all depends on your needs. But in the next rating period, I can I can move the scores down to whatever it is they need to be. So this shows regression. This is my documentation for ESY. It's no secret that special ed directors would rather not hire an orientation mobility specialist for the summer because that comes out of their budget. So if they don't have to, they're not going to. You have to have data, and this is data. Um, this is this is something that you know a special ed director can look at and grudgingly say, yeah, all right, fine. Um, whereas uh, other t other tools um, don't allow you to do that because uh, it's just pass fail uh, or it's you know emerging plus and minus. So this shows regression for you. Um, goals. Um, O&Ms tend to write goals that are extremely discreet. Uh, for example, let's go to indoors here and go to ascending stairs. Um, as part of a goal, um, you know we might have. Uh, a student uh, ascending and descending stairs, perhaps at a middle school, who needs to learn that skill. And you might say, you know, uh, so and so is going to uh, improve their their uh, stair technique by um, a anchoring their cane, b bringing their toes up to the edge, c clear, you know, and go all the way through it. And then, you know, uh, put some sort of a, a, a rating 8 out of 10 times, 75% of the time. I don't want to know what happens the 25% of the time the kid doesn't ascend or descend stairs properly. There's probably, you know, paperwork involved, like blood gushing and things like that, too. Um, but it tends to be a very discreet goal, which, you know, when you walk into an IEP and you're talking to a parent and you tell the parent, your kid's doing great. Look, he met this goal for ascending stairs or, or crossing this sort of this intersection or, or whatever your goal was. And that's all well and good. But what do you say when the parent looks at you and says, so are they good to go now? Can they travel all by themselves? You know, because our focus tends to be so narrow on IEP goals, we can't answer the larger question. So with the inventory, you can still write the ascending stair goal or the particular intersection goal or, or whatever it is you want to you wanna do, whatever skill it is you want to work on. But you can also um, do it by domain. You could say that their street crossing score will improve from 33.1% to a minimum of 40%. You know, and so then you'd be able to tell that parent, well, you know, your kid knows about a third of what they need to in order to cross a street, and we're going to get them up to knowing about 40% by the end of the year, or 50%, you know, halfway to what they need to know to cross the street independently. Parent can hang their hat on that a little better. Um, now, what I do is I write my goals based specifically on the total score of the inventory, and you see that down here in this goal line. Um, the student, when they first came to us back in uh, uh, September of 2011, she was only here for a week. We did evals, and then she came back in uh, 2012. We, we wrote a goal of 50%, and we wound up having to continue that goal um, because of the uh, way the IEP happened to fall. Um, she had an IEP here in, in uh, uh, October 2012 and another one here uh, at the end or middle of October 2013, whenever that grading period ended. So her goal was 50%. Now, back here, back in October 2012, her total score was 42%. So what I was able to tell mom, and a point of emphasis, these are not grades. These are scores. 
your kid is not failing mobility, you know, they're not 20% below passing, um, you know, your kid's doing fine. Your kid knows about 42% of all the skills your kid needs to know in order to be a competent adult traveler, you know, able to go where they want to go safely and efficiently. Um, and so 50%, we want to get your kid to be halfway to being that safe, adult, competent traveler. Now, this is a student who's um, uh, currently in sixth grade. Uh, so we've got a lot of time to keep working on these skills. But what I do is I write a goal um, that is uh, essentially so-and-so will improve their O&M skills as demonstrated by increasing their score on the NMS BVI O&M inventory from 42.7% to a minimum of 50% by whatever their IEP date is. Okay, so then every quarter, since I'm updating this quarterly, I have my natural progress report right here. This kid was at 45.7% in December of 2012, 47.3% uh, in March, 49.8%. Uh, uh, and then by the time the uh, the IEP rolled around, she was at 51.8%. Her goal was 50%. Now, right below that, I can tell a parent, you know, back here in October of uh, 2012, your kid was 85% of the way to her IEP goal. And then she was 91% of the way to her IEP goal. And then, you know, here in May of uh, 2013, you know, at the end of that school year, your kid's 99.5% of the way to her IEP goal. Yeah, she's going to meet this goal unless, you know, the bottom falls out over summer for some reason. And as it turned out, the kid was at 103% of her IEP goal. Remember, I only say minimum of 50% because I don't want to come back and have another IEP. I hate meetings, and I don't want to spend a lot of time in them, and I the most uh, uh, IEP paperwork is utterly useless as far as I'm concerned, and I want to avoid doing it. So instead of coming back to an IEP because the student met their goal, you know, like if you if you have that that stair that stair goal again, going up and down stairs, well, if the student meets the goal three weeks later, you're supposed to go back and have another IEP. No thanks, I don't want any part of that. So um, when we had that IEP uh, here after October of 2013, towards the end of that month, wrote the goal 55%. So we bumped it up 5%. The kid in December of 2013 all made it to 53.6%. So I underestimated how far we were going to get with this student. Um, in March, 54.5%. In uh, uh, May, 56.8%. By the time the IEP rolls back around, the kid's at 58.7%. So she's well exceeded the goal. She ex actually exceeded it here in May of 2014. I just kept rolling with that goal because it was a minimum of 55%. And the kid got all the way up to 58.7%. Outstanding. So the kid, uh, the goal moved to uh, 65%. And so now here the kid is at the end of that quarter, she'd already made it to 63.8%. So the goal was actually set back here um, right at the end of the third quarter, and I'm sorry, the, uh, at the end of the first quarter, and here she is at the end of the uh, the second quarter, and she's already closing in on that goal. I'm not worried about it though, because even though when I do the scoring for the uh, March of 2015, um, she's probably gonna have already surpassed the 65%. We're just gonna keep her marching on. Um, I'll have to start a new inventory for her because I've already used all my 12 assessment periods, but we're just gonna keep her moving forward. You know keep her going because we want her to get as far as she can um, and now I can look back uh, well let me get to that in a minute sorry um, so as far as goals go you can go from discrete down to little goals kind of like O&M's usually do you can go to expansive your kids gonna know half of everything they need to know to travel as a competent adult that's something parents can really understand okay data keeping and compilation um, the, that's what the inventory is. I mean, just on this screen right here, you can see a wealth of data and ton of information. You know, just by looking at this, you know this is a kid who has little to no vision because all of these are zeros all the way across. No vision specific skills. Um, you know, we can look at um, street crossings. 20% um, is pretty much your, your kid has potential to do street crossings. You get 20% just for having potential. Okay, so the kid was at 20%, excuse me, 20%. We did some work on street crossings. We didn't make too much improvement over the next three quarters. We made a little bit of improvement, a little bit of improvement, kind of stagnated for most of a year because we were working on some other things. And, you know, now we're making a little bit of improvement again. But as an O&M, you look at this and you can see this kid's 33% on street crossings, near 63% overall. Wait a minute. 
I want to get that street crossing skill up. Or maybe you look at it and say, I want to clean up some of these other things first, and then we're really going to hammer street crossing. Or maybe you say, you know what, this kid's in a new situation. She's going to have to take a city bus to get to, to and from school. Yeah, I really need to work on this public transportation piece. That's all up to you. But at a glance, you can see this kid really hasn't had any exposure to public transportation yet. I mean, she's doing real well with concepts and movement, and she's doing pretty well with single-room O&M. Uh, indoor O&M, you know, she's 50%, but something to keep in mind is what has the student had an opportunity to work on? Uh, she's, she's done a little bit of hand trailing, but, you know, we hit it sporadically. Same thing with navigating open spaces. So we work on that some more, we clean that up, and then if she remembers it, we'll be good to go. Um, you know, her, uh, her accessing of doors, revolving doors and sliding doors, we actually have those on campus. We have a revolving door now because I championed it when we got a new building, and I'm so excited. Um, so this will probably wind up going up to a five because she's going through a revolving door regularly. Um, ascending stairs. Yeah, we have those on campus. We don't have elevators, um, at least not accessible elevators here on campus. Um, and, in fact, in Alamogordo, a town of 30,000, there are no elevators. So except for the, the couple that we have um, on our campus that are in buildings that are shut down at the moment. Um, escalators. I've seen her on escalators at the mall. But when I've seen her on escalators at the mall, it's been so sporadic we haven't been able to get past twos because she hasn't had that consistency. Moving sidewalks, never seen her on one. I've seen her at a turnstile because I took her on a, a, a trip, a summer camp trip. We went to um, uh, Six Flags San Antonio, and they have turnstiles. She went through it. She did great. You know, and she's actually done it a couple of times, and hopefully we'll get to do it this summer as well. So, you know, I can I can see where there are some things we can work on. There are some, like uh, moving sidewalks, we just can't. There's no such thing here in uh, southern New Mexico. Um, the, the nearest airport doesn't even have a moving sidewalk. Um, the elevators, right now, we don't have the opportunity to work on unless we go to a city like Las Cruces or El Paso or somewhere like that and have an opportunity to work on elevators. I'm sure she'd do fine, but I'm not just going to make that assumption here. Remember, we're talking about liability issues, and if I put down, oh, yeah, she's fine on elevators, so let's just change all these to fives, and then one day the kid, you know, falls down an open elevator shaft and gets hurt, you know, she can say, no, we never worked on that. And that's a liability issue, something that makes me extremely nervous. Um, progress over time um, is something that the, uh, the inventory definitely shows. Um, here we are on the front page again, and, and just like uh, we were talking about earlier, this kid started out at 41%. The kid is now at 63.8%. You can see exactly how much progress the kid has made, where they've made progress, and then you can look at the domains. What, what domains have they made progress in? What domains have they not made progress in? And then a, as a parent, the parent can say, look, why is my kid only at 33.1% street crossings? I want you to focus more on that, or why aren't you focusing more on that? So the parent can be part of the process. And depending on the age of your student, the student can be part of the process as well. When I have students do self rating on the inventory. It is very JAWS friendly because it is Excel. Um, what I found is that students rate themselves lower on things they do well and higher on things they don't do well. Not sure why. That's just the way it is. Um, but that can also show you a, a bit of confidence uh, or lack of confidence that students have with certain skills. Maybe you think a student's doing great with something and they're not quite so certain. Um, you know, and so you can go back and show them, hey, yeah, this is a skill you've got. Um, this is all computer-based. I can save this, and I can send it to you on email. I keep a copy. You get a copy. Um, and that's a huge improvement over, say, the TAPS manual. Um, you know, I don't know about you, but the next TAPS manual I get from a, from a previous O&M will be the first. And I don't mail off, or I, I didn't mail off my TAPS manuals because that was my documentation. You know, otherwise, I don't have anything that shows that I work with this kid on this skill. And so the inventory allows you to do that. You keep your documentation. They get it. It's also instantaneous. Um, the inventory uh, is something that can change. It has changed over time. Um, as people have talked about uh, certain things, um, there is on here, and something else to mention, um, there are um, uh, acronyms, LOT, line of travel. Maintain line of travel, LOT. Then you'll see keep head aligned with LOT. So somewhere up above an acronym, it says what it's for. And one of them that's in here is situations of uncertainty. This comes from Donna Sauerberger. Um, she, uh, she suggested I include it with the inventory and allowed me to, and I'm very grateful because it's an important concept. Excuse me. Um, the situation of uncertainty, basically the kid just doesn't know can I make this crossing safely? You know, I, you know if, if they can only hear cars when the car is 10 seconds away reliably and, you know, 
the speed of the cars is such that they're going to get there, you know, and, and be in front of the kid, um, you know, from 15 seconds out before the kid even gets there. The kid can't hear the car far enough away, and so they're essentially just flipping a coin and trying to get across as quickly as they can before they get run over. So situation of uncertainty was a, um, a concept that was added to the inventory. Uh, Janet Barlow talked about uh, how it needed to have uh, something in it with uh, pedestrian access signals because I didn't have anything. So here it is. Um, you know, so as people come up with things and say, hey, this this needs to be added or this, this isn't worded quite right or what were you thinking, you thundering moron, um, I can go back in and make changes as needed. Um, now you got to make a good case for it. I'm not just going to make changes just for the sake of making changes. Um, you know, I, it has to be, you know, you have to persuade me that, yes, this is something that needs to happen, but I'm more than willing to listen, and, and I have made changes. Con contrast that with a book that's been printed you know, if I have a 500 books sitting around, I'm not going to make a change to the book because I got to throw all those 500 books away and eat that cost. You know, and instead of you know just making a change on on the uh, the computer program. Speaking of cost, the inventory is free. Um, the inventory is free. The uh, the checklist is free. The um, this is a checklist that I use when I'm uh, when I'm out wandering around with people. You can also put the inventory on the iPad. I don't like using the iPad just because there's not a keyboard and it makes it a lot slower as far as entering numbers. Um, but you can use the iPad. I just take this on a clipboard. I, I print it off uh, back to back on a, a single piece of paper, and then I'll just go through it. And as we're walking around, um, I'll just I'll just run through this. So this is available uh, to you for free. And then also for free, we have the uh, the evaluation shell, and the evaluation shell, all you got to do is change the name at the top here to your name and your school and your address, um, and it just goes through, and it allows you to just put the total inventory score, put the concept score, put the movement score, all that kind of good stuff, and, you know, put your notes about vocabulary, laterality, parallel, perpendicular, time, and distance. Um, so this is also available to you for free. Um, the uh, uh, inventory can do something else, um, something else that I find to be extremely useful. Let me find my PowerPoint. There he is. Um, I can compile data not only from one kid, um, I can compile data for a bunch of kids. So I can take the numbers, and these are numbers uh, from some kids who I did the inventory on from March of 2011 to December 2011. These are 10 kids, uh, some of them having vision, some of them not having vision, uh, some of them having progressive conditions, some of them not having progressive conditions. I can take it, I can average it. Here's a total percentage, 65.1% was my average percentage for these kids um, back in uh, March 2011. By December, that was up to 66.8%. So I could say that my kids, on average, made uh, almost 12% progress over the year, which when I'm you know, doing my, uh, my year review thing with my boss, you know, I can say, here you go. Uh, this, is, this, this shows I'm good at what I do. I'm not, uh, I'm not as, you know, goofy as you might think. Um, I can further then break it down. Um, and with these kids, when I broke it down, here's some kids who had vision, some kids who did not have any vision, and some kids who were losing their vision. And my kids who had vision, or some degree of vision, um, were making about 10% progress. My kids who had no vision were making about 10% progress. And my kids who had progressive conditions were making almost 15% progress. And then you might ask yourself, well, why on earth would your progressive kids be making so much more progress than everybody else? And it turns out that these kids are, they were hard chargers, they were well motivated, um, you know, they, they wanted to get after it, it was, it was important for them to do well. Um, whereas, and they didn't have any other disabilities, um, whereas there were some other disabilities, there were some motivational issues, you know, kind of with some of these kiddos that kept them from being quite as, uh, uh, or making quite as much progress as these guys. But let's say something else had happened, and instead of 10% or 10.5%, say I found that my kids, my, my kids with no vision were making 1.5% progress and my other kids were making 10 and 14% progress. That would be a big red flag to me that something I was doing wasn't effective. Um, I was doing something that I shouldn't be with these kids. I wasn't doing something that I should be. I was, uh, maybe I had l lower expectations, um, you know, whatever. Something was going on and so that can alert me that there's, there's a problem uh, program um, that I need to address. So that's something that you simply cannot get from uh, an assessment that's uh, a book-based. 
I mean, it's something that doesn't give you that overview of skill um, is going to um, uh, keep you from seeing this bigger picture. And then, you know, that kind of hurts the, the students that, uh, that we have there. Um, the how, biggest, uh, the easiest way to do this is just to sit down and play with the inventory. And, and we'll do that here in a minute, um, at least a little bit. Um, talk about the Minventory, which is designed for multiply impaired. And I was going to do a Binventory for um, uh, preschool kids, but Texas Two Steps is an excellent program um, that, that goes through the developmental sequence and the, the scope of O&M and shows, you know, which skills go with which developmental uh, uh, months and I put together something kind of like the inventory for them for a score sheet and we'll see if they decide whether or not they want to use that or not um, but it, it's an excellent program and it, I just don't have the skills to sit down and come up with that sort of thing never had kids myself I couldn't tell you when a kid starts to crawl that's just not my area um, so um, the bin inventory will not be coming out um, and uh, definitely check out the Texas two steps um, I'm recording this March 2015. They're still in pilot program phase. I would assume by August 2015 they'll be good to go. Definitely check it out. It's well worth your time, particularly if you have any anything to do at all with little kids. Um, and even some kids who are a little bit past six still might be valuable just because some of the, uh, the skills that maybe they didn't develop then are causing you problems now. All right, goals. Talked about this a little bit ago. Um, this is an actual goal. I just changed the kid's name to redacted. So-and-so will improve his orientation mobility skills demonstrated by improving his skill his score on the NMS BVI O and M inventory from 88.1 to a minimum of 90% by September 2016. Um, so paperwork, uh, that goal is done. Um, uh, getting rid of more paperwork. Progress reports. Um, as you can see, so-and-so is well on his way to meeting his goal, 94%. Uh, he improved, and then I just list the areas where the kid improved. Um, and then just a little note about, uh, you know, seeing him twice a month seems to be working out well. Um, same kid uh, uh, continues to progress, reach 92.3%. Remember, his goal is 94%, so he's almost there. Uh, past quarter, saw improvements in the domains of blah, 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 blah. Um, so, again, two minutes, no thought, which... That's what I'm going for whenever it's paperwork. I don't want to have to think about it. Pleps. Strengths. Um, all I do is I go back to the inventory, um, and on this kiddo right here, um, I would say, you know, the so-and-so does well with anything over 80%. So concepts, movement, I'd probably throw in single room O&M since it averages up to 80. Um, and rural travel. So your kid's doing great with those things. And then I would say... Um, your student has room for improvement with the domains of, and then just list everything else that was below 80%. Done. Again, two minutes, zero thought. Um, on doing evaluations, um, when we do evaluations, and I'll have to reopen that folder since I was not smart enough to keep it open. When we do evaluations, um, this kiddo right here, if I had to write an evaluation, I could have it done in about 20 minutes on this kid. And what I do is I just take concepts. There we go. The concept score is 92.5%. Write it right there. Then I come in here and I go into concepts, and I can look and I can see. I'll have to move this back over. I can look and see where the kid's at as far as each of the uh uh, each of the areas. She's doing great in vocabulary, great in laterality. She's doing eh, reasonably well, 80%, uh, 4 out of 5, uh, in parallel, perpendicular, time, and distance. So over here, I would just say uh, student, whatever the student's name is, uh, does well with the skills that make up the areas of vocabulary, laterality, parallel perpendicular, and time and distance. Done. Next. Move on to the next uh, the next area. Um, let's find something where there are a couple of things where the student isn't doing quite so well. Uh, we'll pick uh, indoor O&M. So indoor O&M, the student is scoring 49% overall. That doesn't mean they're doing poorly in all of it. It just means that in some of the areas... Um, they're not doing as, as well as we'd hope. Um, now, normally I would just use a second screen for this. Um, so we've got um, hand trailing is, is a 2, so that's, that's not doing very well. Same thing navigating open spaces. Doors is a 4, so that's good. We'll, we'll put doors as a strength. 
Um, she hasn't had a chance to use elevators, and she hasn't had a chance to do moving sidewalks. So we're going to put doors as a strength. So we come down to the indoors. A student does well with the skills in the area of doors. Uh, she has room for improvement with the skills in the areas of, and since I'm a lazy, lazy man, cut and paste. Hand trailing, navigating open spaces. That's actually why these are all typed out here, um, because I, I got tired of typing them, and, and I really am a lazy, lazy man, um, and I just really don't want to reinvent the wheel. Now, elevators she didn't have a chance to do, so we'll move escalators up here. And turnstiles, she's had a chance to do, um, but uh, um, she's not exactly doing as well as we would like. So, uh, so she has room for improvement with those. And then she hasn't had the opportunity to work on the skills in the area of her areas elevators, and moving sidewalks. So right there, I've completed that, that part of the assessment uh, or the evaluation, and you have a percentage, 49%. She's about halfway, so you know she's got a good way to go on it. I've told you the skill she does well with doors. I've told you the one she needs to work with, and I've told you the one she hasn't worked on. Now, if, for example, for some visual reason, she didn't need to work on uh, elevators and, and moving sidewalks, you know, she doesn't need the skills in the areas of uh, elevators and moving sidewalks. Um, don't know why that would be, but just as an example. So every every one of these areas that I go through, all I'm doing is saying she does well with these, not well with these, and then if there's any that she hasn't had a chance to work on and any that she doesn't need. And that's it. I don't put any creativity into this at all. Um, it, it It's largely um, free of uh, higher level thought which is good because I always hated writing evals where, you know, you're trying to come up with things to say and, you know, how do I want to express, you know, her street crossing skills. And um, this allows you to do it very quickly, very easily. Then you come down to the bottom. I've got recommendations. You just wipe out the ones you don't want, again, because I'm a lazy, lazy man. Um, you can put in any other recommendations that aren't here. Um, and, you, you know, the summary is basically your kid's at whatever percent and she's got these strengths and, and she's got these things to still work on. Um, again, quick, dirty, but... Um, very accurate and something that allows um, somebody who's picking up the student to be able to um, hit the ground running with them. So um, we've looked at um, the inventory as far as um, the what we can do with it. Um, as far as actually entering scores, it's, it's really easy. So let's say that this kid, um, we spent this last quarter and, and we did a whole lot of work here and let's say we hit hand trailing a couple of times and she's got it, you know, I'm not going to call it fives yet because I want to see her do it some other time a little bit further down the line, but she's doing great with uh, navigating open spaces. She's still doing great with normal doors. Um, she's doing uh, reasonably well with the um, uh, sliding doors. Um, there is one here on campus that she can uh, have access to um, and she's doing fantastic with uh, the revolving door since I had that put in as part of the new building and you know really focused on it and let's say we also really focused on the stairs um, we're just gonna up all these scores um, to fives and fours um, and what you're gonna see is everything compiles one it's compiling right here um, the formulas by the way are all protected if you you know mess with the page it says no you you can't mess with that um, and so they're just doing the additions for you and doing the divisions and all that kind of stuff so basically they're, they're just doing the job for you so you don't even have to think about formulas it does all that um, you know let's say we found an elevator and got her on it but we only got her on it once so you know we're not going to give her anything credit for anything other than you know uh, she did it while she was being talked through it um, and then We'll just say that the escalators, we haven't had a chance to do anything with We haven't seen her do it. We haven't seen her not do it. So we're just going to copy and paste. I don't have any reason to move these scores up. I don't have any reason to move these scores down. So they're going to stay right where they are. Okay. And then coming back down, moving sidewalks, same thing. We didn't see this kid on any moving sidewalks, and I won't see the kid on it with any turnstiles until uh, she does a summer camp trip. So I'm going to leave those the same as well. 
So now we've got a score. It was 48.96%. Now it's 64.1%. So we focused on that in the quarter. We got it done. We did some checks. You know, we're comfortable with where the kid is. It kicks back here to the front page, 64.2%. Now, something else you notice, all these are zeros, but the total score is 64.2%. And the score is 64.2% because zeros get averaged out. So if all you have are, uh, is, is one area filled in, that's going to be your total score. So if all you're working on, because you're working with adult clients, is street crossings, these could be filled in, everything else could be blank, and it's fine. The, the system works just fine. So you don't have to worry about zeros, you don't have to worry about doing any math. All you have to worry about doing is looking at each skill, going through it, and the student is capable of demonstrating it, um, you know, so that would be a one, but you know, it doesn't have it. The student can do it only when you tell them. Uh, the student uh, can do it sometimes without being told. Student can do it most times without being told. Student can do it all the time without being told. And then a zero, of course, student doesn't have the skill, or student can't or won't uh, use the skill. Um, you know, because you know a visual issue or or because you know the kid just doesn't need it. So um, as you go through it, you'll find that it it takes less and less time every time you do it. Um, for example, let's go ahead and finish this kid up for the quarter. Let's say that we didn't do anything here in concepts. You know, you look at vocabulary, that's all still the same, that's all still the same. Parallel and perpendicular, you know, eh, maybe she got a little better about identifying parallel and perpendicular. Maybe she's, she's consistent now with that, um, you know, and then uh, uh, hallways as well. So she's, she's doing some parallel and perpendicular stuff she wasn't doing before, so we'll, we'll bump that up just a smidge from fours to fives. Movement, the kid was already doing great. There was only one thing, or a couple things on here, and that was identifying turns. Um, and, you know, say you worked on that, and say now she is consistent with that, and she is making sharp turns, and she does identify that they're turns. Um, single room O&M, chances are good some of these skills would have gotten hit. We're just going to say they didn't. So you just copy it and paste it over. Um, we already did the uh, indoor self-protection. Um, you know, say that uh, while you were working on uh, some of the skills, um, you really did hit some self-protection things, particularly that lower hand, and now she'll do it at least some of the time without you having to talk to her about it um, and tell her, do this now, now do this, now do this. Um, we'll say we didn't mess with the guided section at all. Uh, cane skills, um, you know, we have uh, basic skills, and say we did work on some of these during that quarter. I move a, I just copy the column and move it over. Now I start going through it. Types of grips. You know, is she is she doing the centered above handshake grip? You know, without being told exactly how every time or, or some, uh, most of the time anyway. Um, no, she's still about the same. But she's doing even better with the pencil grip. She's doing that consistently, and she can at least tell me most of the time, you know, what uh, the benefits are of each grip and when those grips can be used. Um, and so you just go through and you make the changes as appropriate uh, based on what you've seen. Sidewalk travel, same thing, you know. Um, did we do any veering, correcting for veering on sidewalks? Um, did we walk down more irregular sidewalks? You know, will she detect that the block has ended? Maybe she does. Maybe, maybe you didn't take her on any broken sidewalks during this quarter, so you just leave that piece alone. But maybe you really hammered veering. And I mean, now she's she's doing fours on most of these, you know, because she's she's getting it and she's doing it without you giving her too much in the way of prompts. By and large, she's 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 almost mastered the skill, not entirely, but almost. Street crossing is the longest one. Um, street crossing is all of this right here. Um, so it is a lot, um, but there's a reason why. I mean, this this is what we got into mobility for to teach people how to cross streets without getting you know. Uh, the bug on the windshield effect. So, you know, going all the way through this, um, again, what I would do is, and what I do when I'm, when I'm uh, uh, doing one of my uh, updates, is I just copy, move it over, paste. Then I start looking through it. What changes have we made? You know, total body alignment. You've worked on veering uh, on um, uh, sidewalks. Maybe you've really hammered it on streets as well, and she's doing great with getting her body aligned, getting her head aligned, her shoulders, her toes, everything's lined up. Um, and she's doing she's doing better with reestablishing that alignment, you know, um, and make whatever changes in uh, the street crossings uh, domain um, are needed. You know, maybe you uh, maybe you really you know hammered on some some T intersections. I mean, like all of them. She's able to identify those things at least some of the time now without you telling her. Um, you know, and then go through and, and make any changes um, as you go down. By the way, on this you can see that in my town um, right here we don't have uh, a 
you know, T intersections, not too many of them. Um, this, these are the, the crossing the top of the T with the uh, street light. Um, we do have one. We haven't worked with her on it yet because she hasn't been consistent enough with some other things. Um, but uh, with uh, all-way stops, you know, she can cross it all. She can go when there's no traffic in the intersection, you know, but we haven't done anything with parallel traffic in the near lane, parallel traffic in the far lane, um, situations of uncertainty. We haven't touched any of that. So you can kind of see things that we've prioritized and things we haven't prioritized just by looking through um, the kids' scores. Uh, orientation, same thing, you know, the, the uh, copy it, move it over, make whatever changes you need to make, you know, whatever it is you've worked on. Let's say you guys have done the indoor numbering system and she's at least pretty consistent on most of them. Um, you know, and she does know that the first number can signify the, uh, uh, the, the floor that the room is on. Um, so, okay, all right, she's real consistent with that. You can make that one a five, maybe the other ones are threes, whatever, whatever that change is. Public transportation, well, we haven't done anything on public transportation. All we got to do is copy it, paste it, move it over. Yep. Well, copy it, paste it, and then, you know, hit the right key to move it over, um, since sometimes... You know, I talk faster than my fingers can move. Um, atypical, uh, same kind of a thing. Um, you know, atypical covers some areas that aren't usually covered. Um, I don't cover some of these things in the same depth they are in other places. Um, inclement weather, for example, is only a very small section. Uh, it's just one area, and it's wind, it's rain, and it's snow. Um, rural travel. You know, this this kid's doing pretty well on rural travel, and maybe we hit this during this quarter. And you, again, you just go through and you look at, okay, move as far off the road as possible. Yeah, she's she's doing that without me getting after her. Um, you know, she's identifying driveways at least some of the time. She's maintaining her orientation pretty well. You know, I'm, I'm having to give her the occasional hint, but not too often. Um, there's ones here all the way across because I don't have a cattle guard that's accessible anywhere near the school. So I can't, I can't, you know, raise her on that. Now, granted, if I find one and can drive her out there and say, okay, now walk across this thing, this is a cattle guard, and, and then drive her around there some, some other time, and then, you know, what's this again? Oh, it's, oh, it's cattle guard. Oh, okay, yeah, you got it. Um, you know, but moving along, vision specific, don't have to worry about it. Kids got no vision, zeros, easy. Um, you know, same thing with the cane skills that a, a student with a lot of vision uh, might not need some of those cane skills. Um, out in community, let's say that, uh, you know, fast food restaurant, she's doing great with uh, finding the back of the line, moving up when appropriate, accessing the menu, ordering and paying for the meal, moving to the side to wait, getting your tray, finding the trash, finding the exit. Um, but we really didn't go to cafeteria restaurants, sit down restaurants, other things. Jump to the front page, boom, here she is. So we now have a score of 68.1%. So, um, this is something that uh, didn't take very long. I mean, you know, you just watched me do it. And, in, you know, time-wise, I don't think it took more than about 15 minutes. Um, and so once you've got it done, which can take about 30 minutes that first time, you know, because you don't really know the kid, um, and then it takes between 15 and 20 to do each of these next columns. Um, and I do them every quarter. Uh, because what I do is I just copy this whole thing and paste it onto the progress report and say your kid went from whatever to whatever he made in gains in you know these domains and and we're going to work on these these other domains here in this next quarter. You know, very easy. As far as estimating a goal, um, let's say that um, you know with this student right here, um, let's say her she was going to have an IEP uh, right after this this assessment period and I had to come up with with a goal, they call me and, you know, say, hey, we have an IEP in 10 minutes. Can you come up with a goal uh, real quick? You know, not that that ever happens. What I do is I just go to the last column that we assessed, and let's say we are going to make this kid really good at street crossings. And so I can change these numbers to fours and, you know, believing that, yes, I can get, you know, analyzing intersections. I can get this kid maintaining her alignment. Oops, not 44. That doesn't work out so well. Um you know, plus intersections, we're really going to hammer plus intersections. We're going to get her to fours on those, and we're going to get her to fours on T intersections as well. Uh, so we're going to make this kid at least in the parlance of most O&M goals, 80%, which is what the fours represent, or what the fours average out as far as the score goes. Um, so we're going to get her to, uh, to fours all the way down, and then we're going to see what kind of an effect that has on the front page. And that's what we're going to take our goal from. So we're, we're just going to assume the kid's going to hold everything else, and she's going to make all these improvements um, here on the plus and T intersections. So we go back to that front page, and now the score is 68.9%. So 
that becomes our goal, 68.9%. Then all you do is close this out. Don't save it. Just close it out. And then the, the numbers that you manipulated, they just go away. And then you've got you know, the original percentage. So that's how we can use this to estimate what the goal should be, um, you know, depending on what it is you are planning to work with on the kit. Um, so that's pretty much what I have on my spiel for this. If you have any questions, uh, my uh, email is rlater at nmsbvi.k12.nm.us. It's kind of a nightmare. Uh, easiest way to find it is to just go on the uh, Google search and do New Mexico School for the Blind and Visually Impaired. And on the front page, there's a link, um, which I might be able to get to. Dot us um, on the front page you can just kind of scroll on down and NMS BVI innovations has it and there should also be somewhere up here NMS BVI ONM inventory you click on there gives you a description lots of wordiness um, kind of shows you a little bit of it um, shows you where to um, uh, where you can um, load these things uh, you know down to your your computer uh, where the checklist is the inventory eval shell is and I was reasonably certain that I had my email somewhere on here, but I am not seeing it. So let me go back over here to Innovations. Um, innovations, this is really cool, by the way. Uh, Jeff Killebrew did our science thing. Um, as far as kids doing uh, um, uh, long equations, uh, chemistry and whatnot, very cool. This was very cool as well. Uh, also something Jeff did. These are just some toys I made to work with some uh, other folks. Um, and somewhere on here, I had thought I had, um, yeah, there it is. Explaining um, and uh, it's right there. Hey, call if you and if you I 